In today's Number Corner lesson, we will be introducing the October Calendar Grid. Take a minute to examine the information on this chart. What do you notice? It says they're all worth one unit, but they're different shapes and sizes. The top one is a 10 by 10 grid. And then there's a dollar bill. The rectangle is made out of 10 squares and the pentagon is divided into five parts. How can these things all have a value of one unit? Maybe you can say that two things are both worth one, even though they're different sizes. Like a regular candy bar and a king size one. The king size bar is bigger, but they're both worth one, even though I would rather have the bigger one. Now about the square and the dollar. There are 100 little squares in the big square and 100 pennies in one dollar. So they're kind of alike even though they're different sizes. Today we are revealing the first calendar marker. I want you to, to suggest different ways to name what you see. How could we represent this in money? Pause the video and comment with your ideas. It's a dime. We could say 10 cents or 10 cents. <laughs> it's worth 10 pennies or two nickels. How could we represent a dime's worth with fractions? We could say it is one tenth of a dollar. And how could we show, oh, there you go, one tenth, one tenth of a dollar. And how could we show a dime with decimals? One tenth. Or we could write it in terms of one dollar like this, 10 cents. Turn to the base tens mats page in your number corner student book. I think it's page 14. You may want to draw a dime underneath the first one, and I'm going to have you shade in the amount of what that represents. So write a dime or 10 cents underneath this grid and shade in what this would represent on a hundreds grid. I'm now going to reveal the second calendar marker. Let's generate names for the amount shown on the second marker. Here we go. Go ahead and shade in, whoops, shade in your base 10 mat to match the second calendar marker. As we talk through this one, I want you to record two or three different expressions to label the amount you have colored in and you can write that underneath your shaded grid. So how could we represent this amount with money? How many total on the grid? A hundred. We know there are a hundred pennies in one dollar and there is only one column shaded in. That's a total of 10. Pause the video and comment with how we could express that in money. You could have said 10 pennies, two nickels, or a dime. You could have also written 10 cents of a dollar. Now let's consider this same amount in fraction form. The penny way would be 10 pennies out of 100. So we could write 10 as the numerator or the top and 100 as the denominator or the bottom. 10 out of 100. 10 over 100. We could also write it in terms of the dime. So what do I mean by this? How many dimes equal a dollar? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, ten. So ten dimes equals one dollar, and we could write one dime out of ten dimes in a fraction, which is one over ten. We actually could read this and say one tenth. All right, now let's tackle the decimals. There are ten tiny squares in one whole column of squares colored in but the whole mat is worth one. You can write one-tenth as 0 0.1. This is the decimal one-tenth. Now I want you to make sense of this decimal in terms of the dime again. How would we show one-tenth on a price tag in a store? When we turn over the calendar marker for day three in October, what do you see? Yeah, that one green rectangle, uh, or that one green square shaded in that rectangle. What are the dimensions of the rectangle? Two by 
five. Yeah, and that's really two times five, which we know is equal to the area of 10. So that rectangle's area is 10. How can we represent this array as money? Well, we have one green square shaded on a grid with t a total of 10 squares. If the array is worth one unit or one whole dollar, what does that make the little green square? Pause the video and comment with your answer. Yeah, a tenth of the dollar. What's a tenth of a dollar? One dime. 10 cents of the dollar. It's worth 10 pennies or two nickels. What is this array in fraction form? We've kind of already talked about it. It's one tenth, one over 10, because one part is shaded out of 10 total parts of the rectangle. And finally, decimals. What is this shaded rectangle equivalent to as a decimal? Yes, 0 0.1, which is read one tenth because the one is in the tenths place. You're probably familiar with one tenth being written this way, like on a price tag. Go ahead and shade in your two thirds, or excuse me, shade in your third base 10 mat. It's not two thirds, what is it? It's one tenth, yep. So shade that in to your third base 10 mat, mat to match what we've been discussing. One column represents 10, and there are a total of 10 columns in the 100 grid we're shading in. So think of it in terms of groups of 10. You only need to shade in one column because it's one tenth. Now I will reveal the next three calendar markers for October. What do you see? For day four, we see two dimes. For day five, we see two columns shaded in. And for day six, we see a shape that has five parts. One of the five parts is shaded blue. I think shapes like this, with five sides and five points, are called pentagons. Now I want you to consider the last grid on your base 10 mats page. Pick one of these days, four, five, or six, to shade in. Be sure to label underneath what day you chose to represent on your hundreds grid, and we will discuss these together in class.